Do third grade fractions give you the heebie-jeebies? Well, we're about to break them down in this episode of Math 345 Support. Hey everyone, my name is Sarah, but a lot of third, fourth, and fifth graders know me as Miss McCarthy. While I create tons of video lessons for students in grades three, four, and five, I thought it might be helpful to create videos just for you, for parents, teachers, tutors, you know, basically anyone looking to support our students in grades three through five to make math make sense. So without further ado, let's jump into today's episode. Let's go ahead and break down the parts of a fraction. So let's say that you had the fraction two thirds with a two on top and a three on the bottom. Only we don't call it the top and the bottom. The top and the bottom of a fraction have a specific name, they each do. So that number on top is called the numerator and the number on the bottom is called the denominator and I usually teach kids to remember that that the one that's down is the d d denominator and when I'm teaching students I also use this little jingle to help them okay it goes like this you see that number on top that's called the numerator it describes the amount that is being considered and when you jump down from the fraction bar denominator it's the total number of equal parts sure love me some fractions and we'll use that song now to break it down when we're modeling fractions because Fractions seem hard and complicated and super challenging if we're not understanding what they actually look like, all right? So the best way, in my opinion, to model a fraction is to use a rectangle. Just like in math, there's more than one journey to take. I just happen to really love teaching fractions using area models or rectangles because it's easy, we can make the parts equal, all of that especially when I'm comparing fractions, which I'll definitely record a video later on in the future with that. All right, so let's use the fraction song to help us. So you see that number on top, that's called the numerator. It describes the amount that is being considered. That will be the part that is usually shaded, but don't teach students to only look for when they're talking about the shaded region. You have to look for what the directions say. It might mean how many blue marbles do you have out of the total number of marbles, right? So the part that they want you to consider would be the blue marbles. In this case, we're gonna keep it as shaded. However, I cannot shade in two parts because I have not drawn my equal parts yet. So if I jump down from the fraction bar denominator, it's the total number of equal parts. Now this three right here is odd. I'm going to teach you something to do when you have an even fraction, but because this one is odd, we're just gonna try our best to make it into equal parts. Okay, and those look really good. We've got one, two, three equal parts. Now you really wanna make sure that when students and when you are modeling, that you're making them look as equal as possible. For instance, this is definitely not equal. Look how much longer this chunk is compared to the other two. It's the total number of equal parts. Make them look as equal as possible, okay? And then what are we, our numerator is two, so in this case it will be the amount that we're shading. Now when we're shading, I always teach students to do it as nicely as you can, but don't let it take you forever, okay? It's just a quick, thing as nicely as you can to shade it in. And this would represent two thirds. Now, another thing I'm thinking of is I'll have students ask, well, doesn't this also equal two thirds? Because we have two parts shaded out of the three, which by the way, this fraction bar stands for out of as well. Okay, and the answer is yes, this right here does represent two thirds because we've shaded in two out of the three total parts. However, coming up, we will be comparing fractions. So I always teach students, just like you read from left to right, get in the habit of modeling them when you're modeling them from left to right, but know that this is also a possibility too, okay? I'm gonna eliminate that one right there because we don't want them drawing them like that. I know I mentioned that rectangles are the easiest, in my opinion, to draw. Um, some students like to go to drawing and modeling with circles, which is great, but sometimes the um, pieces come out a little wonky. And again, shading quickly. Two out of three, okay? Um, another typical way to model in third grade would be using a number line. 
All right, and that's where we would start at zero. To model using a number line, we have three equal parts or three total jumps. So starting from the zero, go one, two, three. That would be one whole right there. And now we can model the other pieces of the fraction. So this would be zero thirds. This would be one third, two thirds, and oops, ah, three thirds. Number lines tend to get students tripped up just a little bit. Um, that's because a lot of them like to start one thirds right here, but we have to teach them that when they actually make that first jump, that's where the one third starts. Now let's talk about one third. You see how that one is in the numerator? Whenever you have a one in the numerator, we call this a unit fraction. It's just one piece of a fraction. Let me go up so you can see that. And then over here, anytime that we have the same number in the numerator as in the denominator, it equals one whole, one whole. Great, let's go ahead and take a look at another fraction. All right, this time let's take the fraction 5 eighths. All right. Oh, I forgot to mention that I have a strategy for how to read fractions. And that is in the numerator, you read it like normal. So this number right here is 5. And the denominator, you read it as the grade level. So you are, if you are in grade 8, you're in 8th grade. If in our last one, the denominator was three, like third grade. The only one that's different that I can think of off the top of my head would be having a two in the denominator, and that would be halves, of course. So let's go ahead and read this one. We would read it like normal. We've got five eighths, five eighths. Now the denominator here is the total number of equal parts, and it's even this time. Because it's even, if I'm modeling with my rectangle that I love modeling with, if it's even, I can go ahead and cut the rectangle in half and then cut this in half too. I can do four parts on this side and four parts on this side for equal parts. Again, trying to make them look as equal as possible. When you've got that even, you can kind of cut it in half and split it. So if the denominator were six, you could do three on one side, three on the other. It just helps to spatially balance it out. It does take practice though. Um, all right, so now we're gonna shade in five, right? Because it's the numerator is five. One, two, three, four, five. Shading it in so that way I can see the clear number of equal parts and not being super sloppy, all right? So that is how you would model 5 eighths, and I'm just gonna stick to the number line. Again, if we've got zero right here, eight would be our number of jumps. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, er, eight. That would be one whole, and then we can label our fractions. Let me just get rid of this six. So we've got zero, eight, one, eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and again with one whole eight eighths. You might wanna have a conversation that four eighths is exactly halfway in between, so it is a fraction equivalent to one half, something like that, and if we're modeling it, it would be that, I don't know if we did this on the thirds, but that Five eighths would be right there, plotting the point, and sometimes we even shade it like that to show the distance. Okay, that's how you would model in a number line. I'm not sure if I did that for the two thirds one, it doesn't look like I did, but you can go back, plot the point, all that jazz. All right, I hope that that was helpful to you. If you have a specific math skill for third grade, fourth grade, or fifth grade that you would like for me to walk through and maybe even make a video, go ahead and send me an email at mccarthymathacademy at gmail.com or you can reach me on Instagram or Facebook 
at McCarthy Math Academy. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am a math teacher and I create tons of videos for students in grades three, four, and five. So if this video helped you, imagine how much the student videos could help your students to make math make sense. If you're interested in seeing some more videos, you should totally check out my website. The links are all below for you, but the website is McCarthyMathAcademy.com. Before we go, I just wanna thank you for pouring into the lives of your students or of your own children to help make math makes sense. And remember that you were born for a reason. You matter and what you choose to do with your life matters. So get out there and change the world in your own special way. And I will see you next time.